very first orca that I saw in captivity was in Marineland on Thames in France, and it was the year that I finished my PhD in 2000. So I've not been involved in the anti-captivity movement uh, in a big way since uh, until that point. So unlike Naomi, he's been doing it for a very long time. So I'm very humbled to be on the stage with, with um, such a, an amazing group of people. And it's a real pleasure for me to be here. But it's also very hard because Obviously, I'm here to campaign and push the story of Morgan. And Morgan's story was actually going to be part of Blackfish. And Gabriella interviewed us. She came to Loro Parque with us. Uh, she went and saw Morgan. And at, at this stage, when we were doing all of this, Tilikum's story had been revealed to Gabriella, but there weren't that many people speaking out. And as more and more people came out and spoke about it, the, the story about Tilikim and Dawn Branchow and everything that was going on became so complex that it was almost impossible to incorporate Morgan's story and the story of Loro Parque into the Blackfish documentary. So Gabriella um, had a big discussion with me and she said, look, we're really sorry, we feel really bad about it because Morgan's story has to be told, but we just can't justify putting it in the documentary because it will muddy the waters too much. So Tilikim became the, the main focus with all of the other peripheral whales in the SeaWorld collection. But Loro Parque still features in the documentary and that's because of Alexis Martinez who died. And Quito, who was belonging who did belong, still belongs to SeaWorld, was shipped to Loro Parque. So the clip that I've chosen for the documentary talks about that, and it's Alexis Martinez's fiance at the time, and, and the trauma that she went through when they found that, that he had been killed. And there is a lovely lady who features in this clip as well, Suzanne, and Suzanne uh, showed us, many of us, the Naomi and, and Sam and myself, video footage that was taken at Loro Parque that at that stage we were all unaware of. And she was a very brave lady to step out and make this footage available. And you'll see Keto the orca going through the endoscopy. And I, I find it unbelievable that this goes on still today because I've also been involved with folks that will mention, like Jeff Foster, who trains these animals to take these endoscopies without a block in their mouth, that they're free floating in the water and they will put the tubes into their mouth freely. And that is, if you have to do husbandry techniques, that's the way it should be done. And yet what you see at Loro Parque epitomizes what Suzanne says, that Loro Parque has a bad reputation. They are not a good facility. None of them are good facilities, but these guys really represent the lowest of the lowest. And that, of course, is where Morgan is. And you all know about Morgan's story because you've heard me talking about it today. So without further ado, we'll, we'll move on to the clip. But I would just like to say that I too, like Miranda, had a lot of trouble choosing which clip to show because uh, Blackfish also features a lot of underwater wild orca footage. And that was all shot from my boat in New Zealand. And I can look at it and pick out all the different individuals and go, oh, there's Anzac and there's Nobby and there's Funky Monkey. And that's really special for me. And it would have been nice to have shown something that was a little bit more lighthearted. But seeing that the theme is um, Morgan today, here we go. Florida Parque, it's in the Canary Islands, which is an autonomous region of Spain. It's the largest tourist attraction in all of Spain. And when SeaWorld sent the orcas to Loro Parque, everybody was always questioning, like, how did they make that leap to send four young orcas to a park off the west coast of Africa with trainers who a lot of them had never been around orcas before. Nothing was ready. The venue wasn't ready. It wasn't ready for the orcas. It wasn't ready for a show. The owner of the park didn't want to lose revenue by shutting down the pools and repairing them. So for three years, the animals ate the pools, and for three years, the animals had problems with their teeth, with their stomachs. So that's the reason why these animals are enduring the endoscope procedures. Those are still SeaWorld's animals, and they are responsible for those animals.
Well, Porky doesn't have a good reputation. People that work in the business know the reputation of places, and Lotto Parque does not have a good reputation. They didn't spend the same amount of time as the SeaWorld trainers, did not go through the same regimen that the SeaWorld trainers went through. You know, and Alexis really was the best trainer. And I did say, I said, you know, you're the only trainer there that, that can hold its own with a SeaWorld trainer. And I said, you know, but you need to be careful. Se quejaba de eso, de estar cansado, y yo pues le intentaba quitar un poco de, de importancia y le decía, pues, todo el mundo se cansa en el trabajo, es normal. Pues esa noche me dijo, ya, pero mi trabajo es físico y yo tengo que estar bien porque yo me juego la vida cada día. Si yo no estoy bien, ¿quién te dice que mañana en un despiste o por cualquier cosa no me pase algo? Y eso me lo dijo la noche anterior al ataque. Anywhere along the line it could have been stopped because everyone knew it was a tragedy waiting to happen but no one ever did anything about it. And in the end, it was the best trainer who lost his life. She sadly says that Alexis, um, the night before he was attacked, said, I'm really tired and I'm worried about it. And he was pushed by his boss, uh, Miguel Diaz, and pushed and pushed. And the, the whole accident has been reviewed a number of times and, and there's a very graphic autopsy out there. And <clears throat> basically, um, you know, he was, he was, his chest was crushed by keto. But we've got to keep it in mind that this accident was actually not the first one at Loro Parque. Eh? There had been a number. And in fact, all of the orca at Loro Parque, eh, with the exception of the young calf and Morgan, have attacked trainers at one time or another. But it's just been covered up. But the evidence is out there. If you do a little bit of a search, it's out there. So I would encourage you to educate yourselves beyond Blackfish. Uh, Sam, who's about to come up here, has got an amazing website that she's working on called Voice of the Orcas. And they have a lot of resources out there. Death at SeaWorld is a phenomenal book that is available. Naomi features in it. And um, it is a really amazing book that goes into a lot more depth than we can see in just um, you know an hour and a half in one documentary. So Death at SeaWorld, Voice of the Orcas, these are really, really important resources that I would encourage you to go and check out. Thank you.